Lesson 1. Family, Relationships and Movement One day, Aman was sitting in his room, looking quite serious. His grandfather went to him and asked why he was so serious. Aman told him that he wanted to know all about his family. Grandfather told him that he lived in a big joint family when he was a child. They lived in a rural area of Uttar Pradesh. After completing his schooling, he had shifted to Delhi for better educational opportunities. Since then, he had been living in Delhi. Aman's grandfather was born in a big joint family in a village of Uttar Pradesh. He had completed his schooling from the village school. In due course of time, most members of his family moved to different places for various reasons. Aman had met all his uncles, aunts and cousins after a long time. When he had visited his ancestral home to attend a family wedding last year. In the same way, Aman's friend Ankita's family also moved from Jaipur to various places for different reasons. Given below is Ankita's paternal family tree. It also shows where her relatives live. Migration Sometimes people move from one place to another to settle there. This is called migration. The people who migrate are called migrants. Most people migrate to other places primarily for the following reasons. Better or higher education, better job opportunities, after marriage, job transfer. Sometimes people have to leave the place of their origin unwillingly. They are forced to migrate and shift to another place. This is called displacement. There are many reasons for forced migration. Natural calamities like floods, famines, earthquakes, tsunamis, etc. usually result in loss of life and property. People have to move to safer places to save themselves. Sometimes wars and some political decisions also force people to move. Partition of India and Pakistan was one such political decision, which displaced many people. Sometimes the government breaks the houses built on unauthorized land. This is called demolition. This also displaces people. Construction of industries, dams and flyovers also compel people to move to other places. Sometimes, during the construction of a dam, the government asks the people living there to leave their homes as the entire place would submerge underwater. When there is a war, people leave their homes to escape from the violence. Sometimes, they seek shelter in another country. Such people are called refugees. Impact of Migration There are certain negative as well as positive effects of migration. A family has to adjust in the new environment. The elderly of the house are left alone when the younger generation migrates. Migrants have to adjust to the local language, food, climate and other cultural changes of the new place. Migration has many positive aspects also. There is an increase in job and educational opportunities. Cultural integration, mixing and cooperation take place between people of different places. Changing Family Structure About three or four decades ago, the structure of Indian families was quite different from the structure of today's family. At that time, women were confined to the home. They remained busy in household chores like cooking food, washing clothes and taking care of the children in the family. Nowadays, girls are encouraged to pursue higher education. Many of them are professionally qualified. They have started working and go out of their houses frequently. Some even run different types of business. Many young boys and girls go to other cities and countries for higher education or work. They have to leave their families. Whenever a family member moves out of the house, the whole family structure changes. When a girl is married, she has to leave her parental home and set up a new home with her husband. 
This also brings a change in her family as well as her husband's family. The birth of a baby also brings a change in the family structure. Quick revision. There are many reasons because of which people move from one place to another. Natural and man-made calamities force many people to migrate to other places. Construction of dams, flyovers, industries, etc. also compel people to migrate. When people migrate from one place to another, they face many problems. Migration has many positive aspects also. There are many reasons for a change in the structure of the family. The birth of a baby also brings a change in the family structure. Lesson 2. Modern Games Games play an important role in our life. They give us refreshment when we get tired and bored after doing the same kind of work for a long time. When we play games, our mind is relaxed. Games have many other advantages too. Let's know more about them. Games keep our bones and muscles strong. When we play a game and follow its rules and regulations, we become more disciplined in life. When we play a game well, it develops our confidence. By playing games, we channelize our mental and physical energies in a more positive manner. Games help us in staying focused and not indulge in unhealthy habits. They help us to handle failures better. We can group games into two types, indoor games and outdoor games. Indoor games. Games like Ludo, Chess, Carom, Snake and Ladder, Table Tennis, etc. are examples of indoor games. These games are played inside a court or indoor stadium. Which indoor games do you like to play? Outdoor games. Games like cricket, hockey, football, basketball, etc. are played outside our homes. These games are played in open grounds, courts and stadium. They are called outdoor games. Individual games and team games. Individual games. A game which is played by a single player in his or her own capacity is called an individual game. Gymnastics, swimming, racing, jumping, skating, cycling, archery, golf, etc. are individual games. We practice these games alone. With the help of our teacher or coach, we can get proper training. With hard work and practice, we can do well in these games. We can take part in inter-school and intra-school competitions. We can bring laurels to our school and make our teachers proud. Can you name some other individual games? Team games. Many games are played in groups. Such games are played between two teams. The number of players in each team varies from game to game. Such games are called team games. Cricket, football, hockey, basketball, volleyball, etc. are team games. We mostly play team games at school during our physical education period. Can you name some other team games? There are some other sports like badminton and tennis which are played both as individual events and team events. In these games, a team comprises of two players in a side. Team spirit In an individual game like chess or wrestling, a player does not depend on other players for winning. He has to depend solely on himself and use all his skills to compete with his opponent. It is entirely up to him to decide how he should play to win the game. A win or loss depends on how good the player is and how well he plays on that particular day against his opponent. But a team game like cricket or hockey involves a number of players in a team. No single player, however talented he may be, can win a game solely on his individual talent. In a team game, victory or loss belongs to the entire team and not to any individual player. 
in a team a player cannot be selfish and play as he likes to be a part of team a player must understand the requirement of the team and support his teammates in achieving the common goal that is winning the players in a team must play together as a team a team in which each player is willing to give his best for his teammates is said to possess team spirit team spirit aims at developing trust and companionship among the team members each player develops a loyalty to his team and does not play for his interest alone a team of less talented players with high team spirit has more chance of winning than a bunch of very talented but selfish players who have no team spirit players in a team with high team spirit encourage each other to make an effort to perform well and win during a competition captain of the team the captain is the leader of the team he decides a plan of action with his team members he directs the work of the team and makes sure that each player does the work given to him or her the captain has a lot of responsibility he often gets the credit or blame for winning or losing the games the leader should be focused about achieving the goal frank honest and truthful fair unselfish and caring towards team members can you think of any other qualities that a leader should have discuss with your classmates and make a list in your scrapbook equal opportunities for girls and boys every child has a right to sound health and physical fitness these days in the schools boys and girls are encouraged to participate in all games and physical exercises together the teachers give a lot of encouragement to girls to participate in school games and competitions national team when we play for our school we are cheered by our schoolmates while playing a game a child excels at the school level if he or she is provided with proper training essential support and encouragement by the teachers and parents as a result of hard work and support he or she may be selected in our national team he or she may become a national player it is a matter of great pride and honor to represent the country in international sports events like the olympic games world championships commonwealth games asian games etc a national player is recognized everywhere and is regarded as a hero by the people of the country a national team consists of players from different parts of the country they might have different languages or religions but when they play for the country they have only one identity indians when our national teams in cricket hockey or any other sport win in international tournaments the whole country celebrates their win as one thus games unite the people of a country through the performances of national teams in recent years india has shown great progress in many sporting events at international level some of the players have made a name for themselves and made the country proud national game Hockey is the national game of our country. Though hockey is not as popular as cricket, it is still played with a lot of enthusiasm by a large number of people. In hockey, India has won many medals in the Olympic Games. Some famous hockey players who have made India proud include Major Dhyan Chand, Roop Singh Babu, KD Singh, Ashok Kumar, Dhanraj Pillai, etc. quick revision games give refreshment when we get tired and bored indoor games are the games which are played inside a court indoor stadium example chess carrom table tennis etc outdoor games are the games which are played outside in the open grounds and courts example cricket football hockey etc 
Lesson 3 Traditional Games Games which are played in our country in earlier times and which still exist are called traditional games. Many games originated in our country in earlier times but with the passage of time some of them either lost or have undergone changes and have taken a new form. However, a few traditional games have survived and are still played in different parts of the world. In India, traditional games like Kho Kho, Kabaddi, Boat Racing and Bull Racing are very popular. Kho 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 is one of the most popular traditional games in our country. It is played by teams of 12 players who try to avoid being touched by members of the opposing team. In Kho Kho, one team sits in a row in the middle of the court with alternate members in the row facing opposite directions. The other team sends in two or three members at a time into the court. The motive for the sitting team is to chase and touch the opponents while following certain restrictions as per rules of the game. The objective is to touch all the opponents in the shortest time possible. The winner is the one who takes less time to touch and make the opponents out. Kabaddi Kabaddi is a very old and popular game. This is played between two teams of seven players each. Players take turns to raid the opposite team's half, chanting Kabaddi Kabaddi in one breath. The number of opponents a raider touches during the raid are declared out and are sent off the field. But if the raider is captured by the defenders or his breath runs out before he returns to his half, he is considered out. At the end of the game, the team with the higher points or score wins. Wrestling Wrestling or Kushti has been one of the most popular traditional games of our country. The wrestlers are known as Pehelwans or Mallas. In wrestling, two wrestlers face each other and attempt to throw the opponent on the ground. Mallakhamb Mallakhamb is a kind of Indian gymnastics, usually performed on a pole. The performer performs various complex exercises which require him to turn, twist, stretch and balance his body on the pole. The grace, agility, dexterity and suppleness of body combined with quick reflexes, muscle coordination and sense of timing of the performers makes this game worth watching. Indian Acrobatics Not is a traditional Indian sport of acrobatics. It is usually seen being performed on the streets by a group of people, normally belonging to a poor Nat family, as a part of their livelihood. The art is practiced by these families over several generations. Some of the common acts include balancing a child on a huge pole, wherein the child reaches the top of the pole, which is balanced by the male member either on his stomach, chest or head. Another familiar act is tightrope walking, wherein a young female walks barefoot on a stretch of thin rope, fastened at the two ends by cross poles, normally balancing a bamboo pole on her hands. Martial Arts The term martial arts means arts concerned with war. The practice of martial arts helps in improving one's physical and mental strength. The martial arts are fighting skills developed over the centuries. Most of them are connected with religion or self-defense. Many are practiced as a way of life to develop a disciplined mind as well as a healthy body. Martial arts have developed chiefly as sports. All gurus and shishyas of martial arts have to make promise not to use their fighting skills to attack innocent people. Judo, Karate, Jujutsu and Kung Fu are some of the famous international martial arts. 
Some of the popular martial art forms of India are Kalari Payato Kalari Payato is the traditional martial art form of Kerala and is practiced by both men and women. It includes demonstration of physical exercises and mock duels, both with and without arms. Today, Kalari Payato is a method of physical fitness and an empty-handed means of self-defense. Thoda Thoda, the impressive martial art form of Himachal Pradesh, requires bows and arrows. The word Thoda actually refers to the round piece of wood fixed to the head of the arrow, which is used to blunt its wounding potential. The game is played in a martial court. Two groups of archers, armed with wooden bows and arrows, face each other. They are accompanied by dancing and cheering team members. One group of archers attacks the opponents with arrows, aiming to hit the part of their legs below the knee. The defenders try to avoid being hit by furiously sidestepping and kicking their legs in all directions. Chebi Gadga Chebi Gadga is one of Manipur's most ancient martial arts. The contestants fight a duel within a circle, each carrying a sword made up of a stick encased in soft leather and a shield made of leather. The person who scores the maximum points wins. Silambam Silambam is a martial art form of Tamil Nadu involving the use of a long staff for self-defense or mock fighting. Two contestants fight within a circle of about 20 to 25 meters radius drawn on an even and hard surface. The result is determined on the basis of the number of touches made by one contestant on another with the tip of the staff. Kick Fighting of Nagaland Kick fighting is a prominent sport in Nagaland. The contestants stand apart on their marks and kick each other solely with their legs. They are not allowed to use their hands or hit or catch each other. Changing Nature of Leisure Earlier, people used to spend their leisure time in different kinds of local games and sports, cottage arts and craft activities and cultural activities. Children spent their leisure time by listening to stories from elders. Boys used to play games like Lattu, Tops, Kanche, Marbles, Gulli Danda, Langri Tang, etc. Girls played games like Ghar Ghar, Stapu, etc. They were encouraged to learn the crafts of sewing, embroidery, making rangolis, etc. Both boys and girls played games like Seven Tiles, Hide and Seek, etc. Grown-up people played card games, Kabaddi, Volleyball, Kushti, etc. They participated in cultural activities like acting in plays and singing bhajans and kirtans. Now, with changing times, the nature of leisure activities has also changed dramatically. Instead of playing outdoor games with friends, children enjoy watching television, playing video games and surfing the internet. Instead of listening to stories or reading storybooks, many children nowadays prefer to watch cartoons and other programs on television. The leisure activities of elders have also changed. Instead of doing physical activities, many people now find it more enjoyable to watch television and go out for eating in restaurants. Quick Revision Kabaddi, Kho Kushti, Malakhamb and Nat are some popular traditional games of India. Acrobatics and martial arts are traditional forms of sports. Gurus, coaches and trainers play a vital role in teaching the ways in which a game is played. Kalari Payattu is the traditional martial art form of Kerala and is practiced by both men and women. Lesson 4 Our Likes and Dislikes 
Our brain is the master organ of our body because it controls all the other body parts with the help of nerve cells. Our brain together with spinal cord and nerves forms the nervous system. The nervous system controls all the other body systems and the sense organs. It is one of the most important systems of our body. It makes us aware of our surroundings. The nervous system has three main parts. Nerves, spinal cord and brain. Nerves. The nerves are a bundle of thread-like telephone wires that connect the brain and the spinal cord to the other parts of the body. There are three types of nerves. Sensory nerves, motor nerves and mixed nerves. Sensory nerves. They carry messages from the sense organs that is eyes, nose, tongue, ears and skin to the brain. Motor nerves. They carry messages from the brain to different parts of the body. Mixed nerves. They carry messages both ways that is from the brain to different parts of the body and vice versa. They are present in the brain and the spinal cord. The spinal cord. The spinal cord has 31 pairs of spinal nerves that connect all the important organs of the body. It starts from the back portion of the brain and continues down to the lower end of the backbone. It is protected by the vertebral column. The brain. The brain controls and coordinates all our actions. It stores a lot of information and can recall the information when needed. This is called memory. The brain is protected by a bony box called the skull. The brain has three main parts, cerebellum, cerebrum and medulla. The cerebellum controls the voluntary movements of our body such as running, walking, throwing, holding, etc. The cerebrum controls the balance of our body. The medulla oblongata regulates the involuntary activities like heartbeat, breathing, etc. Functions of the brain Stimulus, sense organs, sensory nerves sends messages to the brain, Brain receives messages, processes them and forms responses. Motor nerves carry command for suitable action. Muscles or body parts. Body acts accordingly. The sense organs. We have five sense organs. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue and skin. These sense organs allow us to see, hear, smell taste and feel. We use our sense organs to get information from our surroundings. Eyes. Our eyes are very delicate. Each eyeball is safely set in a deep bony socket and is further protected by the eyelids and eyelashes. These protect the eyes from dust and dirt. Ears. The ear has three distinct parts. The outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. We must clean our ears with cotton buds or a clean towel. Nose. The nose filters the air as it enters our lungs. It is the sense organ of smell. Tongue. The tongue is the sense organ of taste. It helps us to eat and speak. Small buds known as taste buds are present on the surface of the tongue. Skin. The skin forms the outer covering of our body. It is the sense organ of touch. Our skin prevents the bacteria from entering our body. Our likes and dislikes. We know that we get information about our surroundings through our sense organs. They are also responsible for our likes and dislikes. For example, Isha and her friend Samira like flowers. Both like to eat ice creams. They both like to watch cartoon movies on TV. But Isha likes classical dance 
while Samira likes western dance. Isha's favorite color is green, but red is Samira's favorite color. Isha is a vegetarian, whereas Samira is a non-vegetarian. Let us see why people sense things differently. Family background. Our family plays an important role in determining our tastes. For example, Isha's family is vegetarian, whereas Samira's family is non-vegetarian. Cultural background. We Indians like spicy and oily food. We also love to eat pickles. We love to live in big families. We like to visit our relatives often, whereas people in the West, those living in UK and the USA, do not like spicy and oily food. They mostly live in nuclear families. Conditions Apart from studying, we also enjoy listening to music, dancing, watching television and playing various indoor and outdoor games during vacation. We do not like to read only our school books. But during examination time, we stay away from loud music, do not watch television and limit our playtime. Special people Most of us are lucky to see the world, hear all kinds of sounds, feel the things around us. We have a healthy and able body and mind. But some people are not so lucky. They are people who cannot see, blind. There are those who cannot hear, deaf, speak, dumb, or walk, handicapped. These are special people because they need special care. Even old people need our care and love. Reading by feeling. Have you ever come across a person who cannot see? Has he or she ever run his or her fingers over your face? People who are blind can see with their fingers. They touch your face to read your features and understand what you look like. Blind people also read texts using a special script of raised dots called the Braille script. It is a system of six raised dots arranged in many different combinations to represent different letters or alphabets. Punctuation marks and even musical notes. This script was developed by Louis Braille, who himself was blind. Inspiration for the physically handicapped. Have you heard about Helen Keller? She was a great writer and scholar who became deaf, dumb and blind at only 19 months of age. Her father appointed a teacher named Anne Sullivan for her. She worked tirelessly for years and taught Helen to read words by spelling them out on Helen's arm. Helen learned how they were spoken by touching Anne's lips as she pronounced the words. Her muteness was a result of her inability to hear, not a problem by itself. But she was never able to speak as clearly as she wanted during her lifetime. Helen Keller's famous words are, The public must learn that a blind man is neither a genius nor a freak and certainly not an idiot. He has a mind that can be educated, a hand which can be trained, and it is duty of the public to help him make the best of himself. In her own life, she worked hard to serve as an example to other differently abled people. Quick Revision The nervous system controls the sense organs and all other body systems. The nervous system has three main parts, nerves, spinal cord and brain. Even though our sense organs are the same, our sense of likes and dislikes for a stimulus is different. Lesson 5. Growing Plants Life is found on the earth in different forms like plants, animals and human beings. All these are living beings and possess some common characteristics like need of food and water, breathing, growth, excretion and reproduction. The main characteristic of all living things 
is the process of reproduction, that is, the process by which living things produce new living things of the same kind. Let us study how new plants are produced and how they grow. Reproduction in plants Like animals, plants have to reproduce to maintain their existence. It is reproduction that results in the growth of more and more plants on our earth. Plants reproduce in different ways. Most plants reproduce through seeds. Some plants reproduce through spores. Some plants reproduce through their other body parts. Reproduction through seeds Most plants bear flowers. When insects visit a flower for nectar, the yellow pollens of the flower stick to their body. As the insects visit another flower, the pollen grains from their body enter the sticky tube of that flower. This tube is called the stigma. The pollen grain helps in the formation of a fruit. This process is called pollination. The process by which a fruit is formed is called fertilization. After fertilization, the flower dries up and a fruit is formed. A fleshy pulp protects the seeds which grow inside the fruit. We generally eat the pulp of the fruit and throw away the seeds. From the seeds, new plants grow. A plant produces many seeds, but not every seed gets a chance to grow into a new plant. Some do not get the right conditions. Some are eaten by animals, some are destroyed by bad weather, and some are not mature enough to grow into new plants. Structure of a seed All seeds consist of three parts, seed coat, cotyledons and embryo. Seed coat is the hard outer covering of the seed that protects the seed leaves. Cotyledons are the seed leaves. They provide food to the baby plant or embryo and also protect it. Some seeds like corn and onion have one cotyledon. Seeds like peanuts and rajma have two cotyledons. Embryo is the baby plant inside the seed. When the conditions are favorable, it forms a seedling. Germination of a seed The growing of a baby plant from a seed is called germination. A seed may have to wait for a very long time before conditions are right for it to start to grow or germinate. Its most important needs are air, water and warmth. When it gets the right amount of all these things, it germinates. The first stage of germination cannot be seen from the outside. The baby plant or embryo grows rapidly by using up its food supply. Soon it is big enough to burst through the seed coat. The first part to appear is the root, which is soon covered with tiny hair. The root absorbs more water and minerals for the plant. Next, the shoot appears. It rapidly grows towards the light. It becomes green and starts making food. The plant at this stage is called a seedling. Gradually, it grows into a new adult plant. Dispersal of Seeds What would happen if a seed grows up beneath its parent plant? Well, it will probably be shaded from the sunlight it needs in order to grow. It will not have enough space either. It will also not get enough water and minerals to grow well. What does it need to grow into a healthy plant? It needs to find a new place as its own home. But the plants are unable to move on their own. So, nature helps the seeds to travel away from the parent plant. This process of travelling or scattering of seeds to different places is called dispersal of seeds. Seeds are dispersed by wind, water, animals and explosion. These are called agents of dispersal. Wind. Some seeds have wings or hair on them. They are light in weight. These features help the seeds to be dispersed by wind. Examples of such seeds are dandelion, cotton and hiptage seeds. Fluff, 
hair and wings help the seeds to float in the air. Water The seeds of water plants and plants which grow near water are dispersed by water. These seeds have certain features which enable them to float on water. For example, coconut seeds have a thick fibrous outer coat and the lotus fruit has a spongy part which make them light and enable them to float on water. Animals Many fruits and seeds are eaten by animals as well as human beings. These pass out in their waste. Human beings eat many fruits and throw their seeds here and there. Explosion Fruits like peas, ladies finger, balsam and pansy burst open when they dry. These seeds are scattered with great force. Reproduction through spores. Plants like algae, fungi, ferns and mosses do not have flowers. They do not produce fruits. They produce spores. Each spore, when it gets the right conditions, grows into a new plant. Reproduction through body parts. Some plants grow new plants from their body parts by different methods. The method of obtaining new plants from the leaves, stems and roots of the parent plant is called vegetative propagation. New plants from stems. Some plants grow new plants from their stems. Plants like rose, sugarcane and hibiscus grow from stem cuttings. Farmers plant the stem cuttings of sugarcane in the soil. The buds in the stem grow into new plants. New plants from underground stems. Plants like ginger and potato grow from underground stems. The parts of a potato and ginger that we eat are actually stems. They have buds called eyes. When planted in the soil, each eye grows into a new plant. New plants from roots. Plants like sweet potato, carrot and radish grow from their roots. New plants from leaves. Some plants reproduce through their leaves. Briophyllum is an excellent example of one such plant. Quick revision. The growing of a baby plant from a seed is called germination. The process of traveling or scattering of seeds to different places is called dispersal. Lesson 6. Sense Organs in Animals You already know that human beings have sense organs to get in touch with their surroundings. Have you ever thought how animals remain in contact with the outside world? Let's know about it in this chapter. Sense Organs in Animals Like us, animals do have sense organs that help them survive in the surroundings they live in. They use their sense organs to respond to different stimuli such as sound, heat, light, smell, etc. Animals use their sense of smell much more than we humans do. Some animals can smell a variety of odors really well, while others specialize in just a few. They use it to identify the presence of other animals in the neighborhood. They also use it in tracking down their prey. Ants have a very strong sense of smell. They have a pair of antennae on the head. These serve not only as feelers but also as organs of smell. They help the ants to find out other ants and communicate with them. The antennae also help them in finding direction. Dogs have a very powerful sense of smell, sniffing, which helps them in locating their food. Inside its nose, the tiny small detectors cover a membrane about 50 times greater than those of our own nose. This strong sense of smell helps them to locate their food. Because of their sniffing ability, dogs are also used by the police in rescue operations. Animals such as lizards, snakes, chameleons have long tongues which they flick in and out to sense what is happening around them. 
A lizard has a special receptor on its head, which is sensitive to light. It acts as a third eye. Snakes can sense the smallest vibrations in the ground. Snakes like pit viper can locate and catch a prey, such as a mouse, even in darkness. They can detect the heat given off by the body of a mouse. A pair of circular pits between the eyes and the nostril contain heat sensors which detect changes in temperature. A shark can smell blood in water from hundreds of meters away. Sense of vision Most birds do not have a strong sense of hearing, but they have an amazing power of vision that allows them to see the smallest movements from a great distance. Birds of prey have the best distance vision in the animal kingdom. An eagle can spot a bird in a field from high up in the sky. Animals that are active at night have the best night vision. Members of the cat family, tiger, leopard and cat can see very well in the dark. Owls are hunting birds that look for their prey at night. They have large, forward-looking eyes. The large size of the eyes helps owls to see objects even in dim light conditions. They can also see very well in bright light conditions. Many insects like ants, flies and honeybees have a pair of compound eyes for vision. The compound eye is made of thousands of lenses. The images received by all of these eyes are put together in the insect's brain to give it a complete image. Sense of hearing Animals that hunt by sound have remarkable hearing abilities. Bats produce very high-pitched sound through their nose or mouth. Then they use their large ears to listen to the echoes that bounce back from their prey. Thus, they are able to locate their prey. They are able to catch them even in complete darkness. Snakes do not have external ear openings. They cannot hear high frequency sounds. But they are not deaf. Their ear bone in their head helps them detect vibrations of sound waves conducted through the ground. How does a snake dance to the tune of a snake charmer? Owls are generally active at night. So they have an exceptional hearing power. Hunting animals like the tiger, leopard and cat have excellent hearing powers. In insects, hearing organs are present as very tiny membranes to hear distant sounds. They are not confined to the head but can be found in different parts of the body depending on the group the insect belongs to. Spiders and cockroaches have hair on their legs which are used for detecting sounds. Crabs have hair on their claws and other parts of the body to detect water current and vibrations. Sense of taste. Bees, butterflies and houseflies have taste receptors on their feet. Before laying eggs on a plant, a butterfly walks on the leaves to make sure they are edible for her young ones. In earthworms, the entire body is covered with taste receptors, thereby ensuring the young ones of ready availability of food immediately on their birth. Sense of touch. Animals that are active at night tend to have a particularly well-developed sense of touch to help them communicate and find food. A cat's whiskers act as very sensitive feelers. These special hair stick from the cat's cheeks and chin and from above its eyes. A cat tends to be most active at night. Whiskers help it feel its way around in the dark. Fish have a lateral line system consisting of sense organs in canals along the head and trunk. These receptors detect changes in water pressure and thus help in movement and locating prey. A bat can detect warmth of an animal from about 16 centimeters away using its nose leaf. Butterflies have hair on their wings to detect changes in air pressure. How animals talk to each other Animals do not use language in the same way as people do. But many animals 
do communicate using sounds. For example, dogs can whine, bark, growl, snarl and howl. These sounds may express fear, danger, hunger or other information. Baboons communicate with each other and make a number of calls that mean different things. For example, they announce alarm with a dog-like bark. Baboons are thought to be very smart creatures that can be trained. Zebras communicate with each other with calls and facial expression. Some zebras make different sounds with different meanings, including an alarm call and a squeal of pain and fear. Some birds such as the parrot can even copy human voice. Owls communicate mainly by sound. They snap their bill, clap their wings in flight or make sound from their mouth and throat. Each kind of owl makes its own special sounds. Honeybees have a unique way of communicating. Worker bees perform a waggle dance to guide other workers towards a source of nectar. Order cues also transmit important information to members of the honeybee colony. Pheromones are chemicals released by insects into the environment to communicate with other individuals of the same species. An intruder may suffer stings if a honeybee colony is disturbed. When a worker bee stings, it produces a pheromone that alerts the following workers of the threat. Pheromones also provide trails to food sources. Do animals sleep? Animals need rest as much as human beings do and in fact some animals need more rest. While an adult human being needs about 8 hours of sleep, dogs and dolphins need a little over 10 hours of sleep. Human babies need as much sleep as adult tigers which is about 16 hours while the sleepy brown bat sleeps for 20 hours a day. Animals sleep in various ways. Horses sleep standing upright. Cows sleep with their eyes closed while bats sleep hanging upside down. Leopards sleep on branches of trees. Fish and fruit flies simply reduce movement to get some rest. Migratory birds are truly daring. They sleep while flying at night. Useful animals. Animals such as elephants, camels, horses and donkeys carry loads for us. Camels and horses are also used to carry people from one place to another. Horses are used on hills to carry people and load. Animals are also used for sports. Horses are used for playing games such as polo. They are also used for sports like horse riding. We keep pets like dogs and cats in our homes. Dogs guard our homes. Cats keep rats away from our homes. Taming of animals by early humans. In the beginning, human beings were mere hunters and food gatherers. With the passage of time, they learned to grow their own food. Agriculture brought with it settled life for humans as they had to look after the plants they had sown. The agricultural way of life brought many advantages with it. Grains could be eaten by humans and the husk could be kept for animals. This enabled humans to domesticate animals. They kept animals like cattle, goats and sheep for various uses, especially for milk and meat. Sheep provided wool for the use during winters. The horse and the donkey were tamed for carrying loads. Useful animal products. Animals like cow, buffalo and goat give us milk. Milk is a complete food. It is good for health. We use milk to make things like butter, cheese, curd, koya and sweets. Some animals like hen and duck give us eggs. Eggs are a part of the daily diet of many people. We get wool from sheep. Wool is used to make woolen clothes. Silkworms give us silk fiber which is used to make silk cloth. We eat the meat of some animals. We cook their flesh to eat. Many people eat meat 
of hen, goat, sheep and fish. We get honey from honeybees. We like to eat honey. It is good to take honey during cough and cold. The dung of horses, cows, camels and goats is used as manure in our fields. Cow dung cakes are used as fuel in our villages for cooking. Bones of some animals are also useful. Tusks of elephants, called ivory, are very costly and are used to make combs, handles and ornaments. But killing animals for their organs is not good. Liver oils of cod and shark are rich in vitamins A and D. Fish waste is useful in making adhesives and fertilizers. Feathers of birds are used by tribal people to adorn themselves on festivals and special occasions. Pearls are obtained from pearl oysters. Pearls are used for making ornaments. Wild animals are useful too. Wild animals in forests help in maintaining the various food chains and the ecological balance of nature, thereby helping to maintain the balance in nature. For example, if all lions and tigers are killed by hunters, then the number of smaller animals like rabbits, deer, etc. will increase. These animals live on grass and green plants. Therefore, green plants will become less in number. We all know how important are plants for our survival as they produce food for us and keep the air clean and fresh. To save wild animals, they are kept in specially protected areas like national parks, zoos and sanctuaries. Care for animals. People often hunt wild animals for their skin, tusks, horns and bones. Some people also kill wild animals for fun. To keep the balance in nature, we should discourage hunting and killing of wild animals. We should not destroy their natural habitat by cutting down forests or polluting it. Forests are being destroyed for developing land for human use and for commercial activities like mining. Water bodies are being polluted by releasing toxic substances into them and by oil spilling. We must do everything possible to save the natural habitats of wildlife. At the same time, we should take care of the domestic animals around us. We should be kind to animals. They are also living beings like us. We should love and take care of them. We should not tease them. We should provide them with good food, clean water and safe shelters. We should take the sick animal to a veterinary doctor at the earliest. Quick Revision Like us, animals also have sense organs. Some of them are highly specialized, which help them search for their food and protect them from their enemies. Sense organs in lower animals are different from those of higher animals. Human beings use animals in many ways for their benefit. Lesson 7 Forests and Forest People a huge area covered with naturally growing plants of different types and bushes is termed as forest. The growth and type of plants in a forest depend on the climate and soil of the region. In India, forests are mainly found in the upper Himalayas, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the Western Ghats and the greater Assam region in the northeast. Small remnants of forests are found in Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand and in the hilly and mountainous regions of the country. Most of the natural vegetation cover over the rest of the country has been cut down to clear the land for human settlement. The Importance of Forests Forests are very important for our environment. They are useful to us in many ways. Forests provide shelter to many types of animals birds and insects. Forest animals provide us with meat, honey, skin, lac, etc. Forests serve as lungs by cleaning the air for us. They take in carbon dioxide and provide us with oxygen. 
Forests are generally responsible for rainfall. The leaves of trees transpire water, leading to cloud formation and thus resulting in rain. Forests provide a number of economically important products, such as cane, bamboos, essential oils and resins. Forests prevent soil erosion. The roots of trees bind the soil and do not allow it to be washed away with water or get blown away with the wind. Forests provide us with wood. Furniture, boats, wagons and countless other things are made of wood. An important use of wood is the production of paper on which books, magazines and newspapers are printed. Apart from these, a number of forest plants are used in medicines such as cinchona and eucalyptus. The oil from eucalyptus is used to relieve pain, whereas the bark of cinchona tree gives quinine used to cure malaria. Forest people Many local communities live in or near forests and use forest products to survive. They are known as adivasis or tribal people. India is a big country. Different states have different tribes. They differ from one another in their cultures, languages, costumes, customs, religions, etc. Dependence of Tribal People on Forests Many tribes of India are still dependent on forests for their food, fodder, clothing, building, materials, etc. Food They eat tamarind, custard apple, amla, wood apple or bell, edible berries and many wild fruits as food. They also eat roots, stems and flowers of some plants. Forests also provide a variety of nuts. Fodder Grass is used as fodder for the animals. Medicinal plants The tribal people have sound knowledge of medicinal plants found in the forest. They use neem, amla, cinchona, etc. to cure diseases. Building materials They use wood to construct houses. Leaves and grass are used to make roofs of these houses. Wood They use wood as a fuel for cooking and heating homes for warmth during winter. Spices The tribal people gather spices like cloves, cinnamon, etc. Other forest products The tribal people collect leaves to make patal, leaf plate on which they eat their food. Collect tendu leaves for making beedis. Make brooms and mats from grass. Obtain rubber from the rubber tree. Obtain turpentine, tannin, resins, gums from trees. Make baskets from bamboos. Collect seeds meant to get oil. For example, oil from sal and neem are used in making soap. Oil obtained from sandalwood is used to make perfume. Tribal people sell forest products in the market. Sacred Groves Many tribal societies worship nature. They consider certain plants and animals as sacred and worship them. Neem, people and banyan are considered sacred trees. On religious festivals, these trees are decorated and worshipped. It is believed that this brings prosperity, a good harvest, good health and peace. In our country, sacred groves are an integral part of some tribal societies. A certain patch of forest land is dedicated to a deity or village god. This is called a sacred grove. No one is permitted to cut any tree or kill animals or birds in this area. Sacred groves are protected by the local tribal people. Thus, sacred groves promote conservation of forests. Deforestation Cutting down of forests on a large scale is called deforestation. Deforestation causes soil erosion and makes the land infertile. Floods and landslides are common in deforested areas. 
animals lose their homes when we cut down forests. Climate also becomes warmer. Reasons for deforestation Shifting cultivation In many forests, the tribal people practice shifting cultivation. They clear a patch of forest by cutting the trees in that area and cultivate crops. After a few years, due to not using manure or fertilizers, the land becomes barren and thus unfit for further cultivation. The tribal people leave this place and clear another patch of forest land for cultivation. Urbanization Due to growing population, forests are cleared for agriculture and building cities and towns. Displacement of the tribals Due to excessive cutting down of forests, the natural habitat of the tribal people are being destroyed. They are being forced to evacuate the forests and go to urban areas to earn their livelihood. Tribal people find it difficult to adjust to the life in the cities. They have neither modern education nor do they have the technical skills to survive in towns and cities. The Chipko Movement Cutting down large number of trees in the Garhwal Himalayan region led to landslides. In 1974, hundreds of women from the Chamoli district in Uttarakhand went into the forests when the woodcutters arrived. The women put their arms around the trees, telling the woodcutters that they would not be able to cut the trees without first killing them. The contractors withdrew and the forests were saved. The Chipko movement spread and many villagers began to guard the forests from being felled. The movement was led by Chandi Prasad Bhatt and Sundarlal Bahuguna, well-known environmentalists of India. Forest Conservation Man is bound to cut trees to fulfill his needs. Our country does not have enough forests to meet our increasing needs. There should be a balance between cutting the trees and planting new trees. We should plant trees in a big way. Trees should be protected from diseases and pests. Forest fires should be controlled quickly and effectively. To increase the forest area, our government has started many programs like the Social Forestry and Van Mahotsavs. Van Mahotsav is celebrated every year during the monsoon. During this program, thousands of school children participate and plant trees every year. Did you know? Van Mahotsav was initiated in 1950 by K.M. Munshi, who was a noted environmentalist and also the Agriculture Minister of India at that time. Quick Revision Forests are an essential part of our environment. They are useful to us in many ways. Many local communities live in our forests and use forest products to survive. They are known as Adivasis or tribal people. Cutting down of forests on a large scale is called deforestation. The Chipko movement was started to save trees from being cut down. Lesson 8 Food and Health Food in the Mouth Food is our basic need. We cannot live without food. Food gives us energy to work and play. It also helps in the growth of our body and protects it from various kinds of diseases. The food we eat passes through various stages in our body before it is absorbed by our body. This process is called digestion. The food which is a mixture of complex substances is broken down into simpler substances so that our body can use nutrients present in it. Let us study the process of digestion and the organs involved in it. The journey of food on its way to digestion starts from the mouth. We take in food through our mouth. Our mouth also has two major constituents which enable us to break the food into smaller particles. They are the teeth and the tongue. The teeth. The teeth are our main tools for breaking down the food in the mouth. 
We all have a pair of jaws with a set of teeth. The upper jaw is fixed to the skull while the lower jaw can move. There are four different types of teeth in each jaw. They are specially designed to perform different functions of cutting, tearing and grinding. The tongue. The tongue is an elongated fleshy structure. It is fixed on its far side but free at the front. The tongue helps to move the food around in the mouth. It also helps to swallow the food. However, the main function of the tongue is to taste the food. The front, back and edges of our tongue are covered with little bumps called taste buds. They help us in reorganizing whether the food is sweet, salty, sour or bitter. Digestion of food in the mouth The process of digestion begins in our mouth. As soon as we take food inside our mouth, our teeth come into action and break down the food into small pieces. The tongue helps in the movement of food inside the mouth. The food becomes wet when it mixes with saliva, a liquid produced by salivary glands in our mouth. It helps to soften food. It has enzymes that start the process of digestion in the mouth itself. Enzymes are tiny bits of protein which speed up many different processes in the body. The enzyme in saliva breaks food down into simpler substance called glucose, which is also called blood sugar. It is this sugar that gets into our blood to give us the energy to do different activities. Glucose is called blood sugar. When you eat starchy food like chapati, rice, bread or potatoes, note how the taste changes as you chew your food in the mouth. Does it become sweeter? This is because the enzymes in saliva act on the mashed food and convert the carbohydrate content into glucose. Body needs glucose. A simple substance that our body absorbs from digested food is glucose. When you take food, the sugar level in your blood rises. Then, with the help of a chemical called insulin, which is released by our pancreas, the glucose molecules move into the body cells where they can be used as fuel. If you have been working hard for a while without eating, your glucose sugar level falls. When sports persons are playing games and need instant energy, they are given a particular drink. This is usually a mix of glucose and water. When a person is suffering from dehydration or weakness due to illness, stress or surgery, glucose solution is directly injected into his blood through a drip. This is called glucose drip. This gives instant energy to the patient. How does food get spoiled? Cooked food generally gets spoiled after a few hours, if not kept in refrigerator. But uncooked food grains remain the same for months. Do you know why? Let's know. Some food like cereals, pulses and spices can be stored for a much longer time than fruits, milk, curd or meat. Why is it so? Let us understand it by taking some examples. When we keep a slice of bread in the open for a day or two, we find green or black patches on the bread. We also find foul smell coming out of it. This slice of bread has been spoiled. It is unfit for eating. The slice of bread has been spoiled due to the growth of fungi a microorganism. Similarly, if we keep a bowl of curd in the open for a day or two, we find that a foul smell starts coming out of it. The curd is unfit for eating. It has been spoiled due to the growth of a microorganism called bacteria. Generally, food materials get spoiled due to the action of fungi, bacteria, insects and rats. Fungi and bacteria in the air settle on food. 
They grow, multiply and decompose the food, releasing substances which are harmful for our health. Eating spoiled food can cause food poisoning, in which the patient suffers from symptoms such as stomach ache, diarrhea, fever and vomiting. Bacteria and fungi grow well at room temperature and in the presence of moisture. Cooked food spoils easily as it has moisture. Rice, wheat and pulses etc. usually do not get spoiled easily because they are almost dry. We can keep them in airtight containers. It protects the grains from insects and rats which cannot reach inside closed containers. This method is called dry storage. Preserving food. We cannot preserve food forever, but we can prevent it from getting spoiled for some time by making it difficult for bacteria and fungi to reach and grow on it. The process in which the food materials are given a suitable physical or chemical treatment to prevent their spoilage is called food preservation. Different types of food are preserved by using different methods of preservation. Let us learn about some of the methods used for food preservation. Cooling Food spoiling bacteria do not grow and multiply in cold conditions. So, when food materials like cooked vegetables and pulses, milk, fresh fruits and vegetables are kept in cool places like refrigerators, they do not get spoiled easily. Fish and meat can be stored in deep freezers for months. Drying Drying is one of the oldest methods for preserving food. The food spoiling bacteria do not grow well in dry conditions. So many vegetables like methi leaves, spinach, cauliflower, ginger can be preserved in our homes just by drying them in the sun. The sun's heat removes water from the food materials and makes them dry. Fish is also preserved by the sun drying method. Boiling Boiling kills all food spoiling bacteria and fungi and prevents the food from spoilage. For example, when we boil milk, the food spoiling bacteria present in it get killed. So the boiled milk remains good for a long time. It does not get sour quickly. Sweetening and salting Some of the fruits and vegetables like raw mango, amla and lemon can be preserved in the form of pickles by using salt as a preservative. Some fruits like ripe mango, apple, orange, pineapple and strawberry can be preserved in the form of jams and jellies by using sugar as a preservative. Salt and sugar remove water from the food materials. This prevents the bacteria from growing and prevents food spoilage. Potatoes and bananas are preserved in the form of wafers by drying and using salt as a preservative. Besides salt and sugar, mustard oil, vinegar and spices are also used as food preservatives. Canning In this method, Food is first heated to a high temperature to kill food spoiling bacteria and fungi and then sealed in airtight cans to prevent attack of microorganisms again. Using chemical preservatives Some chemicals like sodium, metabisulfate kill all food spoiling bacteria and prevent food spoilage. Sodium metabisulfate is used to preserve foods such as jams, jellies, juices and squashes, so as to save them from spoilage. When people do not eat the right food, Pankaj's mother is not happy with the eating habits of Pankaj. She is very unhappy. Pankaj is ill very often and is not growing well. Pankaj looks pale and gets tired easily. He doesn't have the strength to participate in school games and sports and is absent from his school very often. The doctor says that his blood has less iron than it should have. She told him that he must eat a balanced diet. 
he must eat the vegetables his mother cooks. Medicines alone will not help him become strong. Pankaj's teacher and friends have also made him promise that he will take care of his health and eat balanced food every day so that he becomes healthy and strong like most children. Some Deficiency Diseases, Their Causes and Prevention Disorder Caused Due to Lack of This in Diet Food Which Helps to Prevent or Cure It Anemia The Person Looks Pale and Gets Tired Easily Iron Apples Green Leafy Vegetables Meat and Bananas Night blindness. When a person cannot see well at night or in dim light. Vitamin A. Carrot, tomato, green leafy vegetables, papaya, mango, milk, butter, eggs and fish liver. Rickets. Bones and joints do not grow well. Vitamin D. Milk, eggs, liver, vegetable oils, fish and sunshine. Underdeveloped bones and teeth. Calcium and phosphorus. For calcium, milk and milk products. For phosphorus, green vegetables, beans, milk, meat and fish. Poor growth, nervous disorders like beriberi, where the person's growth becomes slow. Vitamin B. Milk, meat, nuts, eggs, cereals, dark green vegetables. Scurvy. Bleeding gums, skin takes long to heal. Vitamin C, tomato, citrus fruit, green leafy vegetables, lemon, goiter, swelling up of neck, bulging eyes, iodine, iodized salt, seafood. What is a balanced diet? Your diet is whatever you eat in a day. A balanced diet is the one that includes the correct amount of carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, water and roughage. The amount of food you need each day depends on your age, size and sex as well as your general level of activity. Do you know? Roughage is the fibre found in vegetables and fruits and in the seed cover of cereals and pulses. The food pyramid shown on the right will give you an idea of the kind of food items you should have every day to stay healthy. Deficiency Disorders It is important that we eat the right kind of food so that our body gets the essential nutrients in the right amount. Malnutrition occurs when the body does not get essential nutrients. This leads to various deficiency diseases. Deficiency disorders can be prevented by taking a proper diet. Just improving the diet can often cure them. Study the table given on previous page to understand the various deficiency disorders and how they can be prevented or cured. Option. Study the table given on previous page to understand the various deficiency disorders and how they can be prevented or cured. Quick revision. Breaking down of food into simple form is called digestion. Germs grow on food kept in the open for a few days. Food is very precious. We should not waste it. We must eat a balanced diet. A balanced diet is the one that includes the correct amount of carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, water and roughage. Lesson 9. Food for Plants and Animals You know that human beings, plants and animals are living things. We see different kinds of plants around us. These plants are the basic source of food for all living things. They are the only living things that can prepare their own food. All animals somehow depend upon plants for food. There would be no food at all on the earth without green plants. Food for plants. Leaves of plants make food for the plants. For this, the leaves need three important things. Water, carbon dioxide 
and sunlight. The roots take in water and minerals from the soil. The stem carries these materials upwards to the leaves. The leaves absorb carbon dioxide from the air through small pores called stomata on their surface. Most plants have green leaves. The color of the leaves is green due to the presence of a green pigment called chlorophyll. The chlorophyll pigments trap energy from the sun to make food. This energy is utilized by the chlorophyll to make sugar with the help of water and carbon dioxide. This process is called photosynthesis. This sugar is later changed into starch and stored in different parts of the plant. Life-saving gas, oxygen, is also produced during photosynthesis. Water plus carbon dioxide, sunlight, chlorophyll, gives oxygen plus sugar, starch. Why do plants need manures and fertilizers? Do you know? Plants also need various nutrients for their proper growth and development. They absorb these nutrients from the soil through their roots. Sometimes, the fertility of the soil gets depleted because of certain factors. To maintain the level of fertility of the soil, manures and fertilizers are added to the soil. How do non-green plants get food? Non-green plants like mushroom, mold and fungi do not have chlorophyll to prepare their own food. They get their food from dead or decaying remains of plants and animals in the soil. Insectivorous plants Though plants do not normally eat other plants or animals like us, there are some plants which eat animals, especially insects. They have special methods to trap their food. Such plants are called insectivorous plants. Let us learn about some insectivorous plants. Venus flytrap Venus flytrap catches and digests animals like insects and spiders. It has a pair of terminal lobes hinged at the midrib forming the trap. The lobes exhibit rapid plant movements, snapping shut when stimulated by prey. It takes about 10 days to digest its prey and then the trap reopens and is ready for reuse. Pitcher plant In a pitcher plant, the leaf is modified to form a pitcher-like structure. When any insect sits on the pitcher, the lid is closed and the insect is trapped in the pitcher. It is then digested by some digestive juices secreted from the plant. Sundew Sundew has leaves having tentacles, each of which carries a sticky fluid at its tip. Insects find the fluid attractive, but once they touch it, they cannot escape. The tentacles close around the insect like a net. Food for animals Animals also need food like we do. They obtain food from plant or animal sources. Based on the type of food they eat, the animals are divided into the following groups. Animals that eat only plants or plant products such as grass, leaves, grains are called herbivores or herbivorous animals. Cow, deer, goat, zebra, horse, elephant, etc. are examples of herbivores. Animals that eat flesh of other animals as food are called carnivores or carnivorous animals. Lion, tiger, frog, snake, leopard, etc. are examples of carnivores. Animals that eat both plants and animals as food are known as omnivores or omnivorous animals. Crow, dog, bear and man are some examples of omnivores. Animals that eat dead animals or leftovers of animals, hunted by lions, tigers, etc., are called scavengers. Jackals, hyenas and vultures are examples of scavengers. Animals that live in or own other living organisms and derive their food from their hosts are called parasites. Mosquitoes, leeches, tapeworms, roundworms, etc. are examples of parasites. Food chain 
Living beings are dependent on each other for their survival. For example, a goat eats grass and human beings eat goat meat. A deer eats plants and a tiger eats a deer. This sequence of eating and being eaten results in a chain called the food chain. Food chains exist everywhere in nature. Aquatic food chain. The aquatic food chain suggests that weeds in the water are eaten by the small fish and a small fish in turn is eaten by a big fish. This makes a food chain. Terrestrial food chain. The terrestrial food chain given alongside suggests that the plant on land is eaten by a deer. A deer in turn is eaten by a lion. In a food chain, as the food goes from one level to the next, there is also a transfer of energy at each level of the chain. Quick revision. Like human beings, plants and animals also need food for their growth and survival. Green plants make their own food by a process called photosynthesis. According to food habits, animals can be grouped into herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, scavengers and parasites. The sequence of eating and being eaten results in a food chain. Lesson 10. Properties of Water We see a number of materials in our daily life. They exist in solid, liquid or gaseous form. But water is the only material that exists in all the three forms, solid, liquid and gas. Let us study some of the properties of water. Some materials are soluble in water. Take a glass and fill it with water. Add one spoon of sugar to it. Mix the sugar well and observe. You will find that the sugar has disappeared. Taste the water. It is sweet. This is because the sugar has dissolved in water. So we say that sugar is soluble in water. Milk, common salt, washing soda, potassium permanganate are other examples of materials that are soluble in water. Now take another glass and fill it with water. Add half a spoon of sand to it. Mix the sand well and observe. You will find that sand settles down at the bottom of the glass. Sand does not dissolve in water. So we say that sand is insoluble in water. Do you know? Many gases like oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide etc. dissolve in water. In soda water or any other soft drink, carbon dioxide is dissolved under pressure. When we open a bottle of soda water, we can see the dissolved carbon dioxide escaping out rapidly in the form of bubbles. The water in rivers, lakes, ponds and seas has a lot of oxygen dissolved in it. Plants and animals living in water use the oxygen dissolved in water. Some materials sink and some float on water. Take a beaker and fill it about two-thirds with water. Drop a stone in it. The stone sinks in water and settles down at the bottom of the beaker. The material which sinks in water is heavier than water. So we can say that stone is a material which is heavier than water. Now take another beaker and fill it about two-thirds with water. Drop a small piece of wood in this beaker. The piece of wood starts floating on it. It does not sink in water. The material which floats on water is lighter than water. So we can say that wood is a material which is lighter than water. Copper, aluminium and chalk are other examples of materials which are heavier than water. Plastic, ice, oil and kerosene are other examples of materials lighter than water. Properties of liquids There are various kinds of liquids like water, oil, milk, ink and petrol. They are different in many ways. They have different colors and smells. But they are also similar in many other ways. They are not rigid. That is, they are not fixed like solids. They can flow from a higher 
to a lower level. They do not have a shape of their own. They take the shape of the container they are kept in. They have a definite volume, that is, they can be measured. Measuring liquids Liquids have a definite volume, but do not have fixed shape. They take the shape of the containers in which they are kept. When the container is completely filled with a liquid, its volume is equal to the inner volume of the container. The most convenient apparatus for measuring the volume of a liquid is a measuring cylinder. A measuring cylinder is a glass container with marking, indicating volume in litres and millilitres on it. One litre is equal to 1000 millilitres. A litre is the standard unit for measuring liquids. We buy liquids like milk, oil and petrol in litres. Different fixed measures are also used to measure liquids. Quick revision. Milk, common salt, washing soda, potassium permanganate and sugar are soluble in water. Sand, glass, wax, oil and kerosene are insoluble in water. The material which sinks in water is heavier than water. The material which floats on water is lighter than water. Liquids have a definite volume but do not have a fixed shape. Liquids are most commonly measured in litres using a measuring cylinder. Litre is the standard unit of measuring liquids. Lesson 11 Life in Water Plants and animals live both on land and in water. You will be surprised to know that the number of organisms found in water is many times more than that found on land. In this chapter, you will study about plants and animals found in different water bodies like ponds, lakes, rivers and oceans. Aquatic Plants Plants which live in water are called aquatic plants. Their body parts are specially adapted to live in water. Aquatic plants can be grouped into different categories depending upon where they grow in the water. Free floating plants. Some aquatic plants like duckweed, pistia, water hyacinth are found floating on the water surface in ponds and lakes. These plants have spongy stems and a large number of air spaces. This helps the plants to float on the surface of water. These plants remain in contact with water and air but are not attached to the soil. Rooted floating plants In certain aquatic plants like water lily and lotus, the roots are fixed to the soil but they have long stalks which help to keep their leaves floating on water. Their leaves have an oily surface which makes them waterproof. Underwater plants Some aquatic plants like hydrilla, pondweed, valesneria and tape grass grow under the water. Their narrow leaves do not have stomata. They breathe through their body surface. These plants are fixed in the soil at the bottom of the pond with the help of their roots. These plants use carbon dioxide present in water to make their food. Aquatic animals Animals like fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds and even mammals live in water. There are also some lower animals like insects, crabs, prawns etc. that live in water. They have features that help them to move around in water. Those that remain underwater have features that help them to inhale the air that is dissolved in water. Fish A fish has a streamlined body to move in water. It has well-developed gills that help it to breathe in water and fins that help it to swim. Aquatic animals with shells Lobster, seahorse, turtles and crabs are also aquatic animals and have suitable limbs for swimming in water. The paddle-like flippers of a turtle 
help it to push water back while swimming crabs too breathe with gills do you know coral reefs are often mistaken for plants a reef is made of coral colonies that are formed by tiny coral animals amphibians animals like frogs toads salamanders can live both on land and in water frogs have a porous skin that helps them to breathe and live in moist conditions and have lungs to breathe on land birds herons have long slim legs that help them to stand in water they have big narrow and pointed beaks that help them to catch food ducks also stay in water they breathe with the help of lungs and have webbed feet that help them to swim in water and walk on land aquatic mammals whales and dolphins are mammals that live in water they breathe with lungs and keep coming up to the surface of water to gulp in air they swim with the help of fins and have streamlined bodies like the fish quick revision many plants and animals live in water they are called aquatic plants and aquatic animals respectively aquatic plants can be grouped into free floating plants underwater or submerged plants rooted and floating plants aquatic animals have features that help them to move around in water lesson 12 types of houses we live in a house with our family members a house protects us from heat cold rain and thieves we keep our valuables safely in our house besides we feel comfortable in our house variations in houses we can see different kinds of houses at different places they differ in shapes sizes and designs even at one place the types of houses differ variations in the types and designs of houses can be due to many factors let us study these factors climatic conditions and landforms in hilly areas there is a heavy rain and snowfall so people living in such areas make their houses with sloping roofs this prevents rain water and snow from accumulating thereon they slide off easily from the roof in the arctic regions the ground is covered with ice and snow throughout the year the natives of this place called eskimos cut blocks of snow and make dome shaped houses out of it these houses are called igloos the snow wall acts as an insulator and prevents the icy winds from entering the igloo it also prevents the warmth inside the igloo from escaping even when the outside temperature is as low as 45 degrees celsius the temperature inside the igloo is not very low it is very warm and cozy in earthquake prone areas like japan people build houses of wood and bamboo these houses are light and do not cause much injury when they collapse during an earthquake houses in flood prone areas are made on raised platforms supported by wooden pillars called stilts these houses have ladders going up to the entrances the ladder is removed at night to protect the people from animals in the area these types of houses are also built near the sea shores in kashmir and kerala many people make houses on boats these are called house boats house boats are a great attraction for the tourists visiting these areas available materials in villages while building a house it is an advantage to use materials that are easily available in the area thus where clay and brick kilns are found in plenty we find houses made of bricks where bamboos and grass are available people make huts with thatched roofs materials like bricks tiles iron and cement are not easily available in villages so people make mud houses these are called kachcha houses the roofs of these houses are thatched roofs made of wood bamboo and straw 
the walls of these houses are plastered with mud. These houses are not very strong and need repair from time to time. In cities and towns, in cities and towns, building materials like bricks, tiles, cement, iron, marbles, glass, etc., are easily available. So people here make houses using such materials. These houses are called pakka houses. These structures are strong and long-lasting. In big cities, the shortage of space has led to the construction of very tall buildings. These are called multi-storied buildings or skyscrapers. They have many floors and each building has a large number of houses called flats. In cities, because of the availability of raw materials and resources, houses of different designs are made. From simple residential colonies to big bungalows, houses here are built in very fashionable styles. They reflect the architectural skill and fineness in their construction. These pakka houses are strong and permanent and do not need any repair frequently. Economic status The type of house a person builds also depends on the money he can afford to spend in constructing the house. A man of small means will build a small house and use cheaper materials. On the other hand, a rich man can build a big modern house using highly expensive materials like sandstone, teakwood, marble, etc. While building a house, materials used for the roof, wall and floor depend upon the money one can invest. According to the amount of money spent, houses can be of two types. Low-cost houses A large number of people in rural areas are very poor and cannot afford to build high-cost houses. They look for materials which are cheaper and are available within the limits of their budget. That is why they make kacha houses for themselves. Many poor people live even in cities. They cannot afford proper shelters. They use cheap materials like plastic, tin sheets, plywood and cardboard to build makeshift houses. Such areas in cities are called slums. High-cost houses Bungalows, havelis and other pakka houses seen in cities and towns are high-cost houses. Materials used in building these houses are expensive and fashionable too. The roofs are made of burnt tiles or concrete. The walls are made of brick and plastered with a mixture of cement and sand. Expensive tiles, wallpaper or even glasses are used on these walls to make them look good and attractive. The floors are made of expensive marble or porcelain tiles. Expensive wood and glass are used in making doors and windows in these houses. Quick Revision The environmental conditions of a place, availability of building material and financial resources influence the type of house one builds. There are houses made of ice called igloos in areas covered with snow. Houses in hilly areas have sloping roofs. Places affected with frequent earthquakes have wooden houses. Lesson 13. Social Life A child is born in a family. All the members of the family look after the child and fulfill his or her needs. Thus, the child acquires values like love, sharing, tolerance, cooperation, caring etc. in the family. In this chapter, you will study about the community life of human beings and animals. A family is the basic unit of the community. Several families, living close to one another, make a community. Families build their houses. The family culture gradually extends into the culture of the community. A community consists of families engaged in different occupations. Amongst its members are farmers, barbers, weavers, tailors, carpenters, 
goldsmiths, shopkeepers, laborers, doctors, teachers, engineers, bankers, etc. A community promotes interdependence. We are dependent on each other for our existence in the society. Everyone plays a role in the society, as one cannot do all the work alone. Thus, division of labor becomes essential in the society. Living together in groups gives us many advantages, such as safety, protection, cooperation, help and assistance when one needs. It also fosters sharing of resources, sharing the feelings of sorrow, joy and learning from each other in many areas. Society and its member families Families of the society share common facilities for the social well-being of its members. The sense of sharing common facilities brings balance in the society. Everyone in the society is not equally capable. Some are less privileged and some are more. The society takes care of the old, sick and handicapped people. These things make living for each member of the society easy. The common facilities that we share in the society are market, park, post office, railway station, hospital, transport facility and school. In earlier times, people living in villages used to fulfill their basic needs within the village. There were farmers who grew food, carpenters, potters, blacksmiths and weavers who made items of utility and shopkeepers who sold things. The villagers exchanged articles according to their needs. But modern villages are in direct contact with the towns and cities through transport and various means of communication. Changes in the village life Most of the kacha houses have been replaced by pakka houses in the modern villages. The modern villages are now well equipped with electricity supply water, sewage system and pakka roads. Need for living in groups Just like human beings, most animals also live in groups. Fish live in shoals, birds fly in flocks and elephants live in herds. Hunting animals like lions and tigers hunt in groups but they generally do not live together. In most animals, the purpose of living together is generally due to two reasons protection from enemies and reproduction at the sight of an enemy the animals in a group alert each other by making noise they either run away or ward off the enemy by staying together thus staying in a group helps animals in their survival social nature in animals similarly staying together also helps them in giving birth to and protecting their children. Animal babies are safer when they grow with a group of animals. Most animals do not have a social nature and there is no clear-cut division of labor in an animal group as it is in case of human beings. However, insects like ants and honeybees are known to have a well-developed social organization in their colonies. They live in groups and work collectively in search of food. They protect each other from enemies. The behavior of ants and honeybees reflect the social nature of the insect world. Ants are very small animals that live in a colony with many other ants. Colonies consist of underground nests with a series of chambers connected to each other by small tunnels. These, there are rooms for nurseries, food storage, etc. Some of these colonies are extremely large with millions of ants living like a big family. Like humans, ants divide the work of the colony among themselves. In an ant colony, the ants are divided into different categories depending on the work they perform. Queen ant there is a large female ant called the queen who spends all her life laying eggs. A queen ant can live up to around 15 years. 
male ants. A few winged male ants are produced from time to time. They leave the colony and mate with the queen to produce eggs and then die. Worker ants. There are thousands of wingless female worker ants who gather food, take care of the eggs and maintain the colony. Most of the ants in a colony are workers. They carry tiny bits of soil or dirt from the nest and deposit them at the entrances in a pile. We call this an ant hill. There are larger worker ants called soldiers who defend the colony from unwanted visitors. Honeybees. Honeybees have a highly organized social structure. They live in a nest called a hive. Nearly 50,000 to 80,000 bees live in a hive. Honeybees take care of their infants and protect the queen who is in charge of the colony. There are three kinds of bees. Queen bee. There is a single queen bee in a hive. Her job is to lay eggs in the hive. She lays around 120 eggs per day. She lives for around 5 years. She is the most important bee in the beehive. Male bee. Male bees called drones live a life of leisure. Their only job is to mate with the queen after which they die. Female workers. The worker bees collect nectar, feed the young ones and defend and maintain the hive. Older ones fly outside the hive collecting nectar and guarding the hive from unwanted visitors. They produce wax to make new honeycombs which are hexagonal in shape. Quick revision. Several families living close to one another make a community. The sense of sharing, common facilities, brings balance in the society. Ants and bees exist in groups and work collectively as a social unit. Lesson 14. Natural Calamities A calamity is referred to as a sudden event that causes a great loss to life and property. A natural calamity is one that occurs due to sudden changes in the nature. Some common natural calamities include earthquakes, floods, cyclones, landslides, droughts, volcanoes, epidemics, etc. Natural Calamities Natural calamities, also known as natural disasters, are caused by factors which are beyond the control of human beings. When these disasters take place, they affect a large number of people. They affect the entire nation or community. Let us find out more about these calamities so that we could become equipped to face such emergencies and learn what to do in such situations. Earthquakes An earthquake is sudden shaking or trembling of the earth's crust. Earthquakes are caused due to the collision of the plates of rocks under the surface of the earth. When earthquakes are of great intensity, they cause a lot of damage to life and property. An earthquake can be measured on the Richter scale. Droughts It is a dry period caused due to very less or no rain for a long time in an area. It results in severe water shortage. Ponds and lakes dry up. Huge cracks develop on the soil. Due to scarcity of water, crops dry up and wither away. People do not have food to eat. Their animals are starved as they depend mostly on farm wastes. Floods Due to heavy rains, the rivers overflow their banks and water of these rivers overflows into the surrounding areas. This is called a flood. During floods, large areas get submerged in water. Due to water logging, standing crops are damaged. Many people and animals get drowned in flood water. Landslides Sometimes a massive rock or a huge lump of soil breaks off and slides down the hillside or the mountainside. It is called a landslide. It destroys everything 
that comes in its path. Volcanic eruptions. A volcano is a hill with a vent. The vent reaches down to the molten rock beneath the earth. During a volcanic eruption, the molten rock is forced up the vent and flows out of the top as lava. The lava flows out very fast and burns everything that comes in its way. It causes great damage to property and life. Cyclones. A cyclone is a fast-moving, violent and destructive windstorm. Strong whirling winds, together with heavy rain, destroy houses and spoil the crops. A cyclone at sea brings huge volumes of water from the sea to the coastal areas. The rushing seawater destroys everything that comes in its path. Cyclones are a great threat to the people living in coastal areas. Tsunami Tsunami is a series of giant ocean waves produced by an underwater earthquake or volcanic eruption. These waves, at times 30 meters high and 200 kilometers long, traveling at a speed of 250 to 900 kilometers per hour, can hit seaside habitations and cause enormous loss to both life and property. Epidemics An epidemic is a disease that spreads quickly and affects a large number of people. Some such diseases are plague, malaria, TB, cholera, dengue, etc. If proper precautions are not taken, the epidemics take the life of a number of people. People stricken by natural calamities need all kinds of help. Many national and international non-governmental organizations, NGOs, work at the time of such calamities to provide help and support. Some such organizations are Volunteers of Indian Development and Empowerment, CRY, First Hand Foundation, Indian Red Cross Society, Oxfam, People who have been affected by a natural calamity need physical, economical and emotional support from the community. Help and support required can be both immediate as well as long term. Role of a community during natural calamities Medical help The first and foremost thing needed in the event of a disaster is medical help. First aid medical care is immediately required to treat the injured persons at the site of the disaster. Government and non-governmental organizations, NGOs, organize medical camps and send medical experts for immediate treatment of the physically injured persons. Ambulances, equipments and medicines are required to attend to the seriously injured people. On a long-term basis, hospitals with all facilities have to be set up in the area to treat people. Relief Supply At the time of such tragedies, the entire community must come forward to provide articles of immediate need to the affected people as soon as possible. Essential needs like food, water, clothes, blankets and tents must be supplied to the affected areas in adequate quantities and in good time. Voluntary and non-voluntary agencies should look after the distribution of food and other relief materials to the affected people. Rescue work People trapped under the rubbles of a collapsed building or in low-lying areas in case of a flood have to be rescued and brought to safety as soon as possible. For this, there are special task forces comprising of experts and specially trained personnel. Many policemen Fire service personnel, soldiers and volunteers are rushed in for rescue work. Sniffer dogs are also put in service for tracking people trapped under the rubbles. Quick revision. Natural calamities are caused due to sudden changes in nature. Earthquakes, floods, cyclones, droughts, landslides, volcanic eruptions, etc. are some examples of natural calamities. People who have been affected by a natural calamity need physical, economical and emotional support from the community. 
Lesson 15 First Aid Accidents are unfortunate events that may result in minor or major injury. Accidents can happen anywhere while working at home, crossing a road, boarding a bus or playing in parks or other places. Accidents often occur due to our carelessness. Although accidents can take place even after we take all precautions, they can be minimized by being alert and by taking precautions. In the event of an accident, sometimes we are not able to get to a doctor at once. In such cases, the immediate help or treatment given to an injured person before a medical aid can arrive gives immediate relief and sometimes even saves life. This immediate treatment is called first aid. Remember the important rules of emergency care. Stay calm. Act fast. Call the doctor immediately. We must have a first aid box at home. It must have the following things. Cotton, antiseptic, lotion, band-aid, gauze, small scissors, forceps, burnol, thermometer, ORS packets, tablets for fever, vomiting, acidity, etc. First aid for some common injuries. Nose bleeding. Make the patient lie down with his head in a lower position than the body. Do not put a pillow under the patient's head. Pour cold water on the patient's head. Do not allow the patient to put his or her finger into the nose. Put an ice pack on his or her nose. Do not allow the patient to blow his nose. Burn injuries. Place the affected area directly under cold running water till the burning pain decreases or cover it with ice or wet cloth. Do not apply ghee, oil etc. on the burn. Make the person roll on the floor or cover his or her body with a blanket. If his or her clothes have caught fire, protect the burn from dust, dirt, flies etc. Cover it with a thin and light cotton cloth. Take the patient to a doctor if the burns are severe. Cuts and wounds. Clean the area thoroughly with antiseptic lotion so that the dirt is washed away. Do not squeeze the wound. Do not wrap the wound with dirty cloth as it causes infection. Put direct pressure on the wound to stop bleeding. If the cut is very deep, call a doctor at once. Insect Bites Insects like bee or wasp sometimes sting us, which is very painful. A sting causes swelling in that part of the body. In case of an insect bite, remove the sting by scraping with a fingernail or a blade and wash the area thoroughly with soap and water. Apply ice, calamine lotion or mixture of baking soda and water to relieve the swelling and pain. Apply lime mixed with sugar on the bite. This will give relief to the patient. Squeeze the wound as it releases the poison in the body. Do you know? Tetanus is a disease caused when the skin is cut by a dirty or rusted object. Anti-tetanus injection given within 24 hours of the accident prevents the infection from spreading. Dehydration Dehydration is caused due to the loss of salt and water from the body. Give the dehydrated person ORS, Oral Rehydration Solution. It can be prepared by dissolving a pinch of salt and one tablespoon of sugar in a glass of water. Quick Revision Accidents can cause pain, suffering and even death. The immediate help given to an injured person before proper medical help can arrive is called first aid. Nose bleeding, burns, cuts and scratches are a few emergencies that require first aid. Lesson 16. Rocks and Minerals The earth is made up of rocks and soil. Rocks are made up of minerals. Rocks are formed in different ways. They are usually grouped according to the ways in which they are formed. These groups include igneous, sedimentary, 
and metamorphic igneous rocks as we know that the earth is very hot inside the temperature deep below the surface of the earth is so high that some materials are in liquid form this molten material is known as magma magma keeps getting pushed upward towards the surface of the earth because of the pressure inside magma which escapes through a volcano is called lava when it reaches the surface of the earth it cools quickly and forms a rock there are different types of igneous rocks depending on how the magma cools granite it is one of the most important igneous rocks it is formed by the slow cooling of magma under the surface of the earth it is made of mica quartz and feldspar crystals it can be white to gray or pink to red in color it is hard and crystalline it is used in constructing bridges and buildings pumice when cooling is very fast a spongy rock called pumice is formed due to the presence of gas bubbles it is a light gray or cream colored rock it is used as body scrubber and also to polish furniture and floors basalt basalt is dark greenish gray to black in color it is a fine grained and glassy igneous rock it is formed when lava cools just above the surface of the earth sedimentary rocks sedimentary rocks contain many different kinds of particles there are different kinds of sedimentary rocks depending on what they are made up of conglomerate this rock is a collection of pebbles and gravel stuck together it is hard and coarse grained rock and cannot be easily weathered it is mostly orange or green color shale shale is formed when layers of clay harden it is yellow red gray green or black in color it is used to make tiles or bricks sandstone sandstone is formed when grains of sand and quartz cement together it is white gray yellow or red in color it is used in buildings the red fort is made of red sandstone limestone limestone is formed from the remains of living things especially the shells and bones of sea creatures settled down in the sea beds they form layers chalk glass etc are made from limestone these layers harden to form limestone metamorphic rocks metamorphic rocks are formed from sedimentary and igneous rocks under the effect of heat and pressure the different kinds of metamorphic rocks are given below marble marble is formed when limestone is subjected to heat and pressure it is found in many colors it can be cut and polished easily it is used to make statues decorative pieces and buildings the taj mahal is made of white marble slate slate is a metamorphosed shale it is gray and shiny and can easily split into thin sheets it is used to make roofs of houses stone walls and chalkboards quartzite quartzite is formed by metamorphosis of sandstone it is such a hard rock that it can scratch steel it is used to make statues rocks contain minerals rocks contain useful minerals minerals are inorganic compounds some minerals are metallic and some are non-metallic metals like iron copper gold and silver are extracted from the ores gems and precious stones like diamond emerald ruby and sapphire are also found in rocks rocks contain minerals like phosphates nitrates of ammonia and sulfates they are added as fertilizer to soil to get a good crop metals we also obtain various kinds of metals like iron silver gold copper tin etc from the rocks we do not obtain these metals in their pure form they are obtained with various kinds of impurities called ores iron is used to make buildings 
bridges, factories, vehicles, etc. Gold and silver are used to make ornaments. Copper is used to make electric wire. Tin is used to make cans. Fuels Coal, crude oil and natural gas are fuels. We get them from under the ground. Coal Coal is used as fuel. It is used in steam engines. In thermal power stations, coal is used as fuel to produce electricity. Crude oil Raw oil obtained from beneath the earth's crust is called crude oil. Crude oil is heated in refineries and changed into petrol, kerosene and diesel for vehicles. Natural gas Natural gas is a kind of gas which is found underground near crude oil deposits. It is used as a fuel. These fuels are limited. They cause pollution when they are used. Thus we should look for alternative sources of energy such as solar energy and water energy. Quick Revision There are three types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. Rocks are made up of minerals. Gems and precious stones are also found in rocks. Coal, crude oil, petroleum and natural gas are fuels. Lesson 17 Fuels and Their Conservation Everything that is used to carry goods or passengers is called a vehicle. It can be drawn by animals or can be powered by an engine. All vehicles which are powered by an engine require fuel. Fuel gives energy for the engines to work. In our modern world, we mostly use vehicles like cars, buses, scooters, motorcycles, large ships, trains and aeroplanes which need fuel. Fuel We need food to get energy to do all kinds of work. Similarly, vehicles also need energy to move. Materials burnt to produce energy are called fuels. Fuels are used for running vehicles. Vehicles use different types of fuels. Good quality of fuels makes movement of vehicles quick and fast. Quick travel means that we can easily move goods from one part of the country to another. Now we can eat coconuts from Kerala and apples from Himachal Pradesh at the same time. Let us study about some important types of fuels. Coal In the past, coal was used as a fuel for running steam engines and ships. In these vehicles, coal was burnt to produce heat. This heat boiled the water in the boiler to produce steam. Steam moved the piston which turned the wheel of the vehicles. This is how the train moved. Coal is now not in much use for trains or steamships. Formation of Coal Coal was formed from plant materials that got buried under the surface of the earth millions of years ago. Due to high temperature and pressure inside the earth, the wood got converted into coal. Absence of air inside the earth also helps in formation of coal. This process is very slow and takes thousands of years to convert wood into coal. Coal is called a fossil fuel as it is made from the dead remains of organisms that lived thousands of years ago. Uses of Coal Coal is used as a fuel for cooking, producing electricity in thermal power plants, moving engines, etc. Many chemicals made from coal are used in drugs, plastic, nylon and fertilizers. Petroleum Today, almost all means of transport like cars, buses, motorcycles, scooters, aeroplanes and ships depend on petroleum products like petrol, diesel and CNG, compressed natural gas. Every motor vehicle has an engine. When fuels like petrol, diesel or CNG is burnt in an engine, energy is produced. This energy runs the engine which moves the vehicle. Formation of petroleum and its products. Petroleum is a dark colored, thick crude oil. In Greek, petra means rocks and oleum means oil. So the word petroleum means oil from rocks. 
Petroleum was formed when small marine plants and marine animals got buried under the sea millions of years ago. Due to high pressure and temperature, their dead bodies got converted slowly into petroleum. Petroleum is obtained by drilling holes called oil wells into the earth's crust. The petroleum so obtained is taken to an oil refinery. Here, from crude petroleum, different types of fuels such as petrol, kerosene, diesel, etc. are obtained. How do we get petrol and diesel? The petrol and diesel obtained at the oil refinery is supplied to the petrol depots in different parts of the country by trains and trucks. From these depots, petrol is then supplied to the petrol pumps by means of trucks. We get petrol or diesel from these petrol pumps. How to save petrol and diesel? We can save petrol and diesel in the following ways. We should keep our vehicles in good condition. We should keep the engines of our vehicles properly tuned. For this, we should send our vehicles for periodic services. Servicing of our vehicles improves efficiency and reduces the consumption of fuels. Hence, we save fuel. We should use public transport like buses, local and metro trains to reduce the number of vehicles on the road. This also saves fuel. We should walk or use a bicycle for covering short distances instead of using motor vehicles. This saves fuel. Knowing the cost of petrol, diesel and CNG. The price of petrol, diesel and CNG does not remain constant. It changes from time to time. Find out the price of petrol and diesel this year and last year in a particular month. This year, last year, the price of a litre of petrol, the price of a litre of diesel, the price of CNG per kg. Conservation of fuels Fuels such as coal, petroleum and natural gas take millions of years to form. But today, we are using them at far greater speed than they can be produced. They are limited in quantity and if used like this, they will be exhausted very soon. Because of the long time they take to form, they are also known as non-renewable sources of energy. The demand for fuels is increasing because the number of vehicles are increasing day by day. This is due to the rise in the living standard of people. High prices, limited supply and polluting effects of fuels like petrol and diesel have compelled us to search for renewable sources of energy. These are also called alternative sources of energy. We can use renewable sources of energy like solar energy, wind energy and energy of flowing water. They have the following advantages over fuels like coal and petroleum. They do not cause any pollution. They are not likely to get exhausted. They are available almost free of cost. We can solve the problem of energy crisis by using more alternative sources of energy, using fuels judiciously and stopping wastage of fuels. Do you know? Historians say the Chinese used petroleum as early as the 3rd century BC. They used long metal drills to reach the oil within the ground and then pushed bamboo tubes into the holes. As the oil gushed to the surface, they collected it. They used oil as fuel in stoves and lamps and also for medicinal purposes. Quick revision. Materials burnt to produce energy are called fuels. Different vehicles use different types of fuels such as petrol, diesel, CNG, etc. Coal, petroleum and natural gas are non-renewable sources of energy. Solar energy, wind energy and water energy are called renewable sources of energy. Lesson 18. Heritage of India India has a number of wonderful monuments. These monuments include forts, palaces, temples, statues, tombs, mosques, etc. All these monuments are the heritage of our country and they reflect our ancient culture and tradition. Let us read about some of the prominent monuments of our country.
the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal is the most famous monument in the world. Located at the bank of the Yamuna River at Agra, the Taj Mahal was built by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in the memory of his beloved Queen Mumtaz Mahal. It was built of white marble. The walls have beautifully carved floral designs. It has a huge garden with a reflecting pool. It took 20,000 laborers and craftsmen and 22 years to build the Taj Mahal. It looks magnificent, especially on a full moon night. Every day, thousands of tourists visit the Taj Mahal. The Red Fort The Red Fort in Delhi was built by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan over a 10-year period beginning in 1638. River Yamuna used to flow beside the eastern edge of the fort. The fort has many buildings such as Diwane Am, Diwane Khas and Rang Mahal. The Golden Temple The Golden Temple is at Amritsar in Punjab. It is the holiest Sikh shrine. It is surrounded by a sarovar in which the pilgrims bathe. The temple is built of marble and its domes and walls are covered with gold. This is why it is called the Golden Temple. The Golden Temple was first built at the time of Guru Ramdas, the fourth Guru of Sikhs. At that time, Akbar was the Emperor of India, who had great respect for all religions. He gave a piece of land to the Guru to build a temple. It was later rebuilt with marble. In 1802, its domes and walls were covered with gold by Maharaja Ranjit Singh. The temple is also called the Harmandir Sahib. The holy book Guru Granth Sahib of the Sikhs is kept here. The Hava Mahal It is a beautiful palace situated in Jaipur, Rajasthan. It is also known as the Palace of Winds. This is so because the building has small balconies and maintain a constant flow of cool breeze. It was made by Maharaja Savai Pratap Singh II. It is made of pink and red sandstone. In the past, the women of the royal family watched processions and parades passing through the streets from these balconies. Nowadays, the Hava Mahal houses a small museum. The Qutub Minar The Qutub Minar is the highest stone tower in the world. It is Delhi's most prominent landmark. It is built of red sandstone and is 72.5 meters high. Its structure was started by Qutubuddin Ebak, but after his death was completed by his successor Il Tutmish. It is said that the Qutub Minar had seven stories in all, but now there are five stories. The fifth has been built with white marble. Each story has a balcony. There is a narrow spiral staircase that goes to the top. The walls bear inscriptions from the Holy Quran. It has 379 curved steps. Near the Qutub Minar compound, there is an iron pillar. It has remained rust-free for the last 1500 years, even in extreme climatic conditions. The Sun Temple. It is situated at Konark, near Puri in Odisha. It is a 13th century temple dedicated to the Sun God. The main temple is in the shape of a chariot with 12 pairs of huge wheels driven by 7 horses. 1200 craftsmen and laborers worked for 12 years to complete the temple. The Gateway of India. It is in Mumbai Harbour. This 26-meter-high structure was erected in 1191 to commemorate the visit of King George V and Queen Mary to India. The Gol Gumbaj The Gol Gumbaj at Bijapur, Karnataka is the second largest dome in the world. It is a mausoleum for Muhammad Adil Shah. This huge dome stands without any pillars. There is a gallery inside the dome. If one whispers in the gallery, its echoes can be heard all around. That is why it is called the Whispering Gallery of the Gol Gumbaj. Looking after monuments 
Most of the old buildings are looked after by the Archaeological Survey of India, ASI. It is responsible for their repair and maintenance. A small entry fee is charged to raise funds for this purpose. We all have to learn to help keep these old historical buildings preserved for the future generations. We can take care of these monuments in the following ways. We should not throw any garbage on the premises when we visit these places. We should never scratch or write on the walls of the monuments. We should not steal statues or any part of these monuments. We must purchase the entry ticket. The money goes towards the maintenance of these monuments. We should do our best to reduce air pollution, especially in areas surrounding these historical monuments to protect them. Quick Revision Monuments reflect the culture and heritage of our past. It took 20,000 laborers and craftsmen and 22 years to build the Taj Mahal. The Qutub Binar is 72.5 meters high. The Gold Gumbas is the second largest dome in the world.